Okay, so before we continue, we'll just go over some housekeeping. So if you have any questions, if you could please post them into the chat box and I'll do my best to answer them at the end of the session. And as I said, if I don't have time to answer them, if I'll take note of your details and I can email you the answer. Or alternatively, there'll be an email address displayed at the end and you can send any further queries you may have to that email address. Uh, both the audio and visual content of this presentation um, are being recorded as well, so please keep that in mind. The recording will be made available to everyone at a later date. And that will be done via uh, EdShare, which is the University of Glasgow's platform for teaching and learning materials. And please note the content of this presentation should not be considered legal advice. And finally, if you could please keep your microphones muted during the presentation, that's just in case any background uh, noise happens to get picked up. And finally as well, um, just to let everyone know in attendance here, um, this is basically a rerun of the presentation that I delivered last Wednesday, that was the 16th. The content is exactly the same, so it's just to let um, anyone know who attended that session as well. So with the housekeeping established, we'll go over what we're going to cover during this presentation. And during this presentation, we're going to focus on the areas highlighted on screen. Um, due to the volume of information we're trying to cover during this session, in some cases, I'll direct you to the applicable resources that I've developed for further reading. Either I'll be delivering a focus session on a particular area in a future date. And regarding the links that are displayed during the presentation as well, I've made them available via the chat box as well. And again, if you have any problem accessing them, please let me know. I can um, put them up again, or alternatively, I'm going to make them available via uh, social media as well. Okay, so we'll just start the presentation now. And to begin with, I'm going to cover what is copyright and I'd like to very go over what copyright is, how it's created, and where to find further guidance for it. So from a UK perspective, copyright is a legal protection that is automatically generated when a person creates something original and in a fixed format. So an example of that would be when a person takes a photograph using their phone, when that image is created, the copyright is automatically created as well. And copyright protects the works of authors and performers for a specific period of time. For example, in the case of uh, written works, like a book, for example, um, the, a published book, rather, sorry, the copyright will last for the author's lifetime, plus 70 years after their death. And the current copyright uh, legislation that is enacted within the UK is the Copyright and Patents Act 1988. And I have up on screen um, a document you should investigate if you'd like to have uh, or read rather about further information relating to UK copyright basics and intellectual property. Then I would examine this document uh, that I developed and the, uh, the document provides an overview of copyright and who owns what. And in relation to who owns what or for intellectual property, IP, I would strongly recommend you examine the university's policy for intellectual property and commercialization. I'm specifically examining section nine because that goes over a uh, student's policy for IP, but in relation to students, so, you can see I have here on the screen the um, web address for it. And again, that's something that I've made available in the chat box as well. So I'd now like to examine how to search for images effectively on, uh, online using Google Advanced Image Search. Um, this is important because there can be the assumption that it's okay to use the images that appear when you search for something use, using Google Chrome or another internet browser. And this is not the case, as the images that appear in your search results could be copyright protected and therefore not suitable for you to use. Um, this is especially relevant to those of you who are producing a thesis, which will be published. 
as it should uh, contain materials that includes images, diagrams, charts, illustrations, etc., that don't infringe uh, copyright. So I'd like to just go over uh, a process of how to use the search engine effectively when searching for images. So for step one, when I used to search for images online using Google, I would simply open up the browser, type in what I was looking for, and then press enter on my keyboard. Then I would click on images to show me the results of my search. Then I would click on my chosen image. And it's at this problem I would encounter an issue as the image search that I had um, conducted had returned unfiltered results, meaning some of the images could be subject to copyright protection. And it's at this point I could, could examine the possibility of using one of the UK copyright exceptions for, for private study to use this. And I'll examine the copyright exceptions later on. But the point of this demonstration is to encourage good practice when searching for images online, which will ultimately save you time so instead of employing the search method we've used so, um, used so far, I would encourage you to do the following in order to return image results that you know can be used in your academic practice. So a quick and easy way of filtering your image searches is to click on the tools button that's highlighted on the screen and do this whenever you've conducted an image search. When you've clicked on the tools button, a drop down menu will appear and from there you click on uh, the text that says usage rights. And then you can select how the um, images are filtered. And you can see on here I've um, highlighted Creative Commons licenses because I know Creative Commons is a suite of license that usually allows the reuse of materials that's, that they are associated with. So I know I, may, I would be able to use the images possibly non-commercially or even commercially. So that's a really good way of, or effective way of filtering your uh, image results. And as I say, we'll, we'll cover uh, Creative Commons in more depth uh, later on. And once you've chosen how to filter your um, image results, and in this example, we've used Creative Commons. If you notice on screen, Underneath each of the images, the source has changed. You see how we've got highlighted a uh, commons.wikimedia.org. That lets me know that the filter has been applied and that the images that I have chosen, I should be able to use. And this is just an effective way of um, to filter your image search results. And I say it will save you having to do a prolonged search online. And one final thing I'd like to make you aware of is you can filter your image results to a more granular level, a more defined level. And to do that, you can do that by clicking on the settings button. And from the drop down menu, you would then click on the advanced um, search. And if you look at what we have on the screen here, You'll notice I can filter my search via words, exact phrases, or I can include or exclude words. I can also via, um, filter search via the image size, the ratio, the colors used as well. And along with the um, usage rights that we applied in our search that we just conducted a few moments ago, so the advanced image search is a really good way of really help, um, helping to refine your image search to a real kind of granular level. So that's just something to bear in mind when looking for images to use in your academic practice, within your assignments, within your thesis, or any coursework you're doing as well. And I'd now like to draw your attention to the tool we have on the screen, and this is a reverse um, image search engine called Tenai. And this is a useful tool when you have an image but don't know what the online source is. And to remedy this, I can upload my images individually to Tenai, which will return search results showing which online websites the image is used in, if at all. And again, this will help, this helps me determine if um, the image is copyright free or if it's copyright protected. 
So we'll go over uh, the quick and easy process of uploading an image and viewing the results using Tenai. To begin uploading an image to Tenai, I click on the arrow button near the center of the screen. That's the one that's highlighted and the arrow is pointing up. So I would click on that. Then a file chooser will appear on screen. I would navigate to the image I want to upload, select it, and then click on the open button. And please note, you might see what's on screen. This is just the image that you've uploaded being uh, processed by Tenai. This can sometimes take a few moments, depending on the speed of your, of your internet connection. But when the results have been returned, you should see something similar to what we have on screen. And near the top of the screen, you'll see the total number of results and the number of images Tenai has searched through. So you can see it conducts a very thorough, um, thorough search. The image has been found in 718 results, and Tenai has searched through 41.5 billion images to find um, the, how the image has been used online. And if you look towards the bottom of the screen, you'll see we have on screen stock.adobe.com. That lets me know that the image has been found in a commercial a website or image collection, that means I'd have to pay to use the image. So that would let me begin to assess that I might need to find a replacement image. Or I could possibly investigate the possibility of using a UK copyright exception to defend the use of this image if it's one that I really had to use and that was to benefit the educational purpose. So again, that's something that we'll look at later on in relation to the UK exceptions. But I'd like to just make you aware of as well, there is an alternative to Tenai as well. You have um, Google Reverse Image Search Engine. And to access this, all you do is click on the camera icon located next to the text entry field whenever you're using Google. And images can be uploaded in the same manner as we did in Tenai. So I would click on the um, choose file to bring up the file explorer. I would then select my file and then click in the upload an image button. And it's another quick and easy way of um, finding images that you don't know the online source for. And I realize we just rushed through both of those processes of using Tenai and Google Advanced um, Image Search. So you can refer to the two videos that I have highlighted on screen, that's in the web page that I created, and the link to the web page can be found in the chat box. But both of these videos go over very quickly. They're both under five minutes, and they both go over how to use Google um, Advanced Image Search, as we saw earlier on, and the other video goes over how to use Tenai as well. So hope they both prove um, useful. I'd now like to cover an uh, area that will help, hopefully help save you time, and we're going to cover where to find reliable, copyright-free online sources for images, video, and audio. And we have on screen here a list that I've created, and again, the web address that's shown on screen is the same as the web page that is in the, uh, currently in the chat box. And the sources highlighted in the list will be useful for you to find um, images, audio and video. And you can use them in your assignments as they come with either no or pretty or much less copyright restrictions and will save you time searching for images um, online or audio and video as well. And the list is in a Word document format and contains a wide range of online sources for images, audio and video. A brief synopsis is next to each uh, collection and you can directly access them by clicking on the blue link text that is found within the, um, the list. It's worth noting there are image collections within the list which will be more relevant to certain colleges or schools within the University of Glasgow. Uh, for example, the following image collections, the CDC, MedPix, Radiopedia and UCSD may be more useful to students from uh, MVLS. 
by contrast, um, images found within the, from the British Library or the Glasgow School of Art may be more useful to uh, students from the College of Arts and Humanities. And it's worth noting there are two collections. One is called Pixabay, the other one is called Unsplash. And both are useful collections if you're looking for general images, say, of people, locations, or everyday items, along with uh, graphics and illustrations. Both of these uh, image collections are useful from those perspectives. And the list also contains uh, links to unique services that are exclusive to University of Glasgow students and staff, like uh, Box of Broadcasts. And I'm going to focus on Box of Broadcasts for a moment, um, just to give you an idea of what Box of Broadcasts is. Box of Broadcasts, or Bob as it's known as as well, is a streaming service that the university subscribes to and it enables the on and off campus recording of television programs. This is relevant as your lecturer may incorporate video footage that is streamed from Bob into a middle course or direct you to resources within Bob. And to access Bob, um, you use your GUID and associated password. And as I discussed a few moments ago, clips from Bob can be embedded into a password protected environment like Moodle, uh, made available to enrolled uh, UK based University of Glasgow students. Um, please note if your lecturer has embedded a clip, uh, a Bob um, video clip with a Moodle course um, you're accessing, you may be asked to log in again. As you can see on the screen, we have the sign in button. So all you would do, you would click on the sign in button that's on the video and use your GID and password to access the video. Again, there's also a Bob information page that I created, which provides a direct link to Bob's login page. And before we continue, just a few notes about Box of Broadcasts. Um, you can't or you cannot download content from Bob as it's a streaming service. And just to let everyone know, um, international students are enrolled in UK universities, but who are currently continuing their studies overseas due to the current pandemic. Um, you can temporarily access BBC News Channel via Bob until the end of September 2020. Okay, so we've covered box of broadcasts. Another area I'd like to focus on for a moment or two, because you may encounter these materials online, is Creative Commons. And I'd like to go over what Creative Commons um, actually is. And these are a set of licenses, sorry. <clears throat> um, these licenses will be relevant to both uh, when you're looking to determine if you can use a piece of media, like an image, which has a Creative Commons license associated with it, or when you're producing your own work, like a published thesis. And just to let you all know, I'll be offering a session in Creative Commons licenses and how they can be implied and created um, on the this Wednesday, which is the 23rd of September. It'll just be the same time, and it will go over Creative Commons in more detail. Um, but just to let everyone know, I won't be going over what license you should be applying to a thesis, for example. Um, I can direct you to resources which, which will help guide you in relation to this. And I wish, would also suggest contacting the excellent uh, research and data management team if you have more queries relating to this. So Creative Commons is a suite of licenses that enable creators a simple and standardized way to give people permission to use their work on conditions of uh, their choice. And there are various levels of use associated with each type of license. At one end of the scale, we have what we call CC0, this, uh, or public domain. This is a very open license type, which allows materials to be reused, repurposed, and distributed both commercially and non-commercially. Whilst at the other end of the scale, we have the license at the bottom that doesn't allow any commercial reuse, doesn't allow uh, derivative as in 
the original materials can't be modified or edited. So by examining the different types of licenses, you can help determine if an image can be used commercially or non-commercially, and also helps you identify uh, if you can use it as well. So it's worthwhile getting to learn more about the licenses and to aid in that, um, I've created two wearing objects that will help you through this process. Um, both are highlighted on screen. One goes through what the licenses are, goes through the, each of the six different types of licenses. The other object goes over um, how to provide attribution if you're going to use uh, materials that have a Creative Commons license associated with them. And if you're looking to apply Creative Commons licenses to open access or science materials, then I would suggest referring to the top two links that are highlighted on screen. And if you're looking to apply uh, Creative Commons licenses to research data, then I would suggest clicking on the link that are highlighted in the bottom of the screen. That's when you visit the web page that I've created, you'll find uh, these sources that are on screen. And we won't have the opportunity to fully explore um, both the fair dealing and UK copyright exceptions. In this section, I'm going to briefly go over what fair dealing is along with what relevant uh, copyright exceptions can be applied and then direct you to the relevant resources. So fair dealing is a framework designed to allow the lawful use of copyright protected work without having to seek permission from the author under certain circumstances. Sufficient acknowledgement must be provided to the author when their work is used, unless it's impossible to do so. And just for acknowledgement, that just means providing credit to the rights holder or copyright owner if you're going to use uh, their work. And fair dealing is tied to a number of UK copyright exceptions, including section 29, which is research and private study, and we'll now examine this exception in a bit more detail. So under UK copyright law, uh, works can be made, uh, can be used rather under fair deal providing it's for non-commercial and research and private study purposes. This exception has been expanded to include extracts from sound recordings, films and broadcasts, as well as literally dramatic and uh, musical works. These can now all be used for research and private study. As I stated earlier, you must provide acknowledgement of the source and only, make a, and only a single copy can be made. Uh, no contract can override this exception, so researchers will be able to make uh, copies regardless of the contract or license terms, which have been applied to the work in question. Whether research is commercial or not should be judged on, an, on an individual basis. If the research that is ultimately carried out will be used for commercial purposes, and this includes even to, uh, sorry, to raise funds for a charity, then the use will probably not be considered a uh, fair dealing. And for those of you who may be producing a thesis, which are to be published, I'm going to go over a few key, uh, key points in relation to if you're going to include a uh, copyright materials uh, within your work. And what we'll do is I'm just going to go over each of the bullet points that are on screen, starting with the check if the copyright work is expired. So in relation to expired copyright, as we discussed earlier, um, the length of copyright associated with a piece of work varies. And to find out more about the length of um, copyright associated with different types of work, I would suggest examining the web page that I developed. And again, you'll find that link within the chat box and looking at a document titled Length of Various Copyright Protected Works, um, UK Law, that will give you information on the length of uh, copyright associated with, with uh, different types of uh, work. And in relation to uh, Creative Commons, um, as we discussed a few moments ago, Creative Commons is a suite of licenses that allow you to um, reuse copyright 
material without contacting the rights holder for permission. Um, the licenses tell you how, how they can be used, how the work can be shared and distributed. And again, to find out more about the licenses, I would suggest examining the, um, excuse me, the one object that I mentioned a few slides ago, that was the one about Creative Commons licenses. And when you use someone else's uh, Creative Commons work in your thesis, you must provide acknowledgement of the author that is aligned to the Creative Commons license associated with the work. They all have um, provisos, and one of the main ones is to provide acknowledgement uh, whenever you use someone else's work. As I said, you don't have to contact them for permission, but you do have to always provide acknowledgement. And again, there is a warning object on the web page that I created, one titled C Creative Commons Attribution, and that goes over how to provide um, attribution if you're going to use uh, Creative Commons uh, materials in your work. And in relation to fair dealing, we've already discussed what this is and how it allows for the use of copyright protected works, providing the usage is considered fair. And you need to make your decision on a case by case basis uh, when considering fair dealing. And some good points to consider when trying to decide if a use is fair or not are, would you consider the use to be fair? Have you, have you, you used enough of the work to convey your point? or purpose? And does the amount you've used damage the market for the original creator? In other words, would it hurt, hurt them financially? So those are just some points to consider when examining uh, fair dealing. And as always, you obtain um, permission from the rights holder conf to confirm you can use the work in their thesis if required. So it's always worthwhile doing that. And uh, make sure it's written permission as well. Um, a phone call wouldn't do, for example, so it has to be written permission through an email, for example. And I realise both fair dealing and the UK copyright exception, exceptions are extensive area. So with this in mind, if you'd like to find out more about the fair dealing and the UK copyright exceptions, I would suggest examining the warning object that I have on screen. Um, this where an object goes over all of the UK copyright exceptions and fair dealing. And please note where well, all the sources that are available on the web page that can be accessed on off campus. Um, there's no requirement for a GUID, you can just log in and view them, or log into the web page and view them rather. So this now concludes the session in copyright. I hope it proves useful. And as discussed at the start of the session, I have on screen the links to the resources that have been discussed. We have the web page and the link to the box of broadcast information page, along with the document around um, IP and commercialization. And as I mentioned at the start, if you have any copyright queries, please send them to the email address that is shown on screen. And I'll post um, any other useful links uh, via Twitter. That's my Twitter handle there, the at Greg Walters 20. So I'll do that at a future date. And this concludes the session. So thank you very much for your time.